Hello guys, welcome to the fifth Arduino tutorial. Uh, today we are looking at a LED traffic light system. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be making a traffic light system in where a button is pressed which activates a red LED, then a yellow LED and then finally a green one. Um, today we're using a lot of code we've already used in previous lessons. If you haven't done the previous lessons, I suggest you do them now. Um, you could, so lesson, this is the fifth lesson. Lesson four, we were uh, turning an LED on with a button. Lesson three, uh, we wouldn't need to do for this one, but we were controlling potentiometers and looking at analog voltage. And then the second lesson, we were um, getting an LED to blink. Okay. So what you will need for today, well, you will need an Arduino or clone solderless breadboard, jumper wires, five LEDs, two green, one yellow, one red, and a push button. Uh, please mind it, you only need one green, one yellow, and one red to do the main part of the lesson, but I'm setting you a challenge at the end where you will need two green, one yellow, and two red. Right, now, we need to wire up the components. I've got a diagram on the next slide. But uh, I want to um, just talk to you about it first. Right, so you would need to wire up your breadboard to the Arduino's 5 volt and ground connections. That's the bit of the side of your breadboard. Place three of your LEDs next to each other in a row. Attach the cathode of each LED to a 220 OHM resistor going to ground. Connect the anode of the green uh, to digital pin 3, the yellow to 4 and the red to 5. So digital pins on your Arduino, 3, 4 and 5, you need to attach the anode of each digit of each LED to them. Place a switch on the breadboard with two pins of the switch on each side of the breadboard. Attach one side to power and the other to digital pin 2 on the Arduino. Add a 10k OHM resistor from ground to the switch pin that connects to the Arduino. And that pull down resistor connects the pin to ground when the switch is open, so it reads low when there is no voltage coming in through the switch. This is the diagram. I make these diagrams on a program called Fritzing, and I couldn't find uh, a 10k OHM resistor on there. So this is a picture of one, put it instead of that wire. That's a good idea, really. Uh, you need to wire up these components on your Arduino. I'm going to give you five seconds to pause the program so you can have a look at this wiring diagram and do it. Okay, so you should have that wired up. Let's have a little look at the code. This is the code that you're going to be using today. Uh, I'm going to get a ballpoint pen so I can make some, so I can show you that. So we've got a little single line comments here. Now, I'm going to ask you at the end what would be a more efficient way of doing all of these single line comments. Think about the previous lessons, but okay int switch state equals null. This is an integer variable, okay? Integer variables, we've said in the past, only contain numbers. Integer is a number, okay? Switch state equals naught. So switch state, you need to name variables, appropriate names that are good and that you will remember and that you can recognize. Switch state, state of the switch, equals naught, and it can only contain numbers, this integer variable. Okay. Now we've got void setup. We've talked about in the past void setup, two brackets facing each other, an opening curly bracket and an ending curly bracket. It sets up the program for the loop. Declare the LED pins as outputs. Right, pin mode 3, output, pin mode 4, output, and pin mode 5, output. If we go back to here, the anode of each LED is connected to 3, 4, and 5. Okay, and it's going to anode of each LED. Now, if we look at here, ground is constantly going to here, so it means that ground is constantly being fed to there, there, and there. Not there. There. I'll just discard these incantations. Right. So we've constantly got ground going to the cathode, and then we, we've de declared these output, as outputs, so we can choose whether to send electricity to these uh, anodes and if we've got ground going to the cathode and electricity going to the anode, 5 volts going to the anode, the LED will light up and we can choose what, uh, when it does that. So we output, um, we, can, we can choose on outputs whether we want electricity to run through it or not. 
OK. Then, declare the switch pin as an input pin mode to input. So if we go back to the code, uh, we've got a button here. When it's pressed, electricity will go to 2, which is an, and we set it as an input. An input can read whether there is electricity going to that pin or not. OK. Let's move on. Void loop. Void loop runs forever, unlike the void setup, which runs, which runs once. So, read the value of the switch. Digital read checks to see if there's voltage on the pin or not. Digital read we've come across in our last lesson. Switch state equals, now that's variable. So saying switch state is equal to digital read 2. Digital, so that means switch state can either be high or low. If digital read 2 is high, it means the button is pressed. It means that there's electricity going to pin 2, because the button is pressed. If it's low, it means the button is not pressed. OK. If the button is not pressed, turn on the green LED and off the red LEDs. So, we've got um, some code here. If switch state equals equals low, which means the button's not pressed, Digital right 3 high, digital right 4 low, digital right 5 low. Now digital right, we've said digital right in the past. Digital right can set outputs as high or low. High meaning you, the, you can send electricity out of that and low meaning you don't. So here we've got digital right 3 high. So there is 5 volts now being sent through digital pin 3. Also we've got 2 the LED. The green LED will now light up, and we've just got the green LED lit up. Now, this else is part of the above if statement. If the switch is not low, the button is pressed. Turn off the green LED and blink alternatively the red LEDs. OK, so else, so if the button is pressed. Digital right 3 low, turn the green LED on pin 3 off. And then digital right 4 low, now that's supposed to say yellow. I will just... I've got an idea. I'll, I'll just put a little yellow thing around that and maybe shade it a bit. Okay, that, that's a terrible idea. I'll use a highlighter. Right, so yellow. That's supposed to say yellow. Okay. Right, so digital right 3 low, turn the yellow LED on pin 4 off. Digital right 5 high, turn the red LED on pin 5 on. So that's turning the red LED on. So it goes red first. Wait a quarter second before changing the light. Delay 250. It's in milliseconds, that's a quarter of a second. OK. Digital right 4 high. This turns on the red LED on pin 4 on. OK. So first it's turned the... Um, that's why I say yellow actually. So we've got... When the button's not pressed it goes green. OK, then when it's pressed it goes red first. Then here, it turns the yellow LED on. So let's just uh, untie that. That's basically yellow. So it turns the red off and the yellow on. Then it waits a quarter of a second, and then it'll go back to green, because that's what happens when the button isn't pressed. OK. Delay 250. And then here is the finished code. Let's just quickly summarise what this code is. So just bear with me one second, that's yellow, and that's yellow. Well, man, I don't need to do that, but okay. Right, integer, sw integer variable switch date equals naught, okay. So that's pretty simple. Void setup, and then we're declaring pin mode 3 is an output, pin mode 4 output, pin mode 5 output, and pin mode 2 input. And then here, void loop. Switch state equals digital read 2. So the switch state is whether there is electricity running through pin 2 or not, depending if the button's pressed. If it's low, then just put the green one on. If it's if it's on, then do first the red at the top, then the amber, and then it goes back to green. Right. Copy this into your Arduino IDE now. And um, run it if you want on your circuit. I'm going to give you five seconds to pause the program. Okay, let's move on. Super hard challenge. If you can't complete this challenge, it doesn't matter. But if you do, you have a very good understanding of the code we've been using. 
If the start I mentioned how you need two two red, one yellow, two green. I want you to make a two-way traffic light system where there are lights for pedestrians and lights for the road. Have them run simultaneously when one is on red, the other is on green. If you can do that challenge, I have to admit you're a genius. It's quite hard. And if you can't do it, it doesn't matter. But if you can, then it's very good. You have completely understood what we've done today. Okay then. Thanks for watching this tutorial. Be sure to watch my many other Arduino tutorials. Um, yeah, if, it, uh, if you have missed any lessons, then be sure to watch them. Um, and thanks for watching. And be sure to comment, like, subscribe, um, whatever you feel is appropriate. Okay, see ya.